what I thought I'd do in today's tutorial is carry on with some of the quest stuff that I started a long time ago and I never finished. So the last tutorial that I did, I demonstrated how to start a quest as soon as the game loads up. But the problem with doing that is, say for example a player starts a new game, it will just immediately start that quest and immediately display that objective and you probably don't want that if they're in the pre-war world. You might also want to have your quest basically have any kind of prerequisite whatsoever. So for this example I'm going to demonstrate having a quest where the player has to be a certain level to start it. So the first thing I'll do is create my quest. So I'm going to right click new and I'm going to put um, tutorial level quest as its ID. Just call it tutorial quest. Give it a priority 45 and I'm just going to select side quest. Hit OK. Save that. And I'm going to look for that again. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the basic stages and objectives, then I'm going to go to the scripting, then I'll come back to the stages and add the quest fragments to the stages. So I'm firstly going to set up a stage 5 and I'm going to right click new in here. I'm just going to put in the designer notes that this is the setup stage, so that's just to prompt us later on. Then stage 10, I'm just going to put start quest, because this is where the actual quest is going to begin. So I'll just quickly put in here, set objective displayed 10. Hit compile there. And hopefully nothing, yep, nothing happens. That's, that's, that's good. So we go to quest objectives, and I'm just going to create an objective with the index 10. I'm just going to call it tutorial objective. So this quest, this tutorial is just going to focus purely on launching our quest. Um, I've done some other stuff on quests, and I'm going to carry on doing some more if, um, if this isn't enough. So what I'm going to now go and do is I'm going to add a script to this quest. So let's hit add. And you might have a whole list, but I've got something put in my filters and nothing's coming up. But we're going to want to hit new script, which will appear in square brackets at the top. Okay. And we're going to want to give it a unique name. So I'm just going to call it tutorial level quest script. And all that is fine. And I don't know why that made a noise then. I think I hit the square bracket key at the same time as I hit the enter key. So now we're going to right click and we're going to edit the source and I'll just make that bigger. So now I've already actually already prepared a script to make sure that everything goes correctly uh, but basically what we're going to well do is we're going to well do three different things here and I'll run, I'll just copy this entire thing over and then I will run through what it all does. Now I'll try and put this in the description but YouTube for some reason won't let me put anything in the description that contains brackets and I'll try and do an annotation or I'll do a comment if necessary but um. The comment won't retain the format. I suppose probably a description thing won't either. But it doesn't really matter. The formats just to make it easier to read. So the first thing we've got is we've created this function called startup, and I've just put a little comment here to prompt us that this is a function to launch the quest. So if startup check equals false, and we'll see startup check here, but I'll go and deal with that in a second. We're going to register for a mo's event. Game dot get player on location change end if end function. And now this startup check is a bool function, so it's not a regular function, it's a function which um, returns true or false based on conditions that we set up. So the condition I've set up is if game.getPlayer.getLevel is greater than or equal to 69, and the reason I've chosen 69 is because the character in my test save is level 68, so it'll be easy to just level up to 69 and demonstrate it working. Set stage 10 and return true. However, if we're not if we're not greater than or equal to 69, i.e. 68 or less, it will return false. And as we can see here, if it returns false, we're registering for this remote event. And now the purpose of this is, if you'll remember the GEC in Free New Vegas, that had a begin game mode function which would run your script again and again and again and again. But that function no longer exists. So what we do now instead is we have to create remote events. So if we want our script to rerun. We have to rerun it when a particular remote event happens. And our remote event is called on location change. And you'll see down here on location change here. And I've also put in brackets actor, act sender, location, act old location, location, act new location. And now these would be useful if we wanted to if we wanted to specially condition it so that the location, for example, if the location the player was changing to had to be a particular location, we would use, say, if Back, new location equals such and such. But we're not bothered with any of that, but it is in there because it's part of the syntax. I've just put startup check 
And as you'll see here, startup check is up here. So basically, every time a player changes location, we are rerunning startup check to check if the player's level is greater than or equal to 69. And eventually, if it is, it will return true. And I just want to quickly grab this copy because I'm going to need that in a second. So now I'm going to go and I better compile that actually. Hit, just hit Control S, and as we can see, it's all worked fine. Close. So now we're going to travel back to the stages, and I'm going to do a little bit more setup. Then I'm going to describe to you exactly what will happen as we run through the entire thing. So for stage five, we're going to want to run on start, and we're going to hit this KMY quest and choose tutorial level quest script, which is the name of a script we wrote before. So I'm going to put KMY quest dot startup check. What am I doing? Open brackets, close brackets, and I'll just jump to the text file and we can see here that startup check is the, the function that we created earlier. So I'm just going to compile that and that's fine, that's worked. But now we're just going to quickly travel over to start quest and we're going to put uh, KMY quest again and select that same script. KMY quest dot unregister for remote event. So basically I've got I've now set it to unregister for the remote event so now it won't be constantly ticking over and ticking over every time we change uh, location because if we have you know hundreds of these on the run at once it might impact performance. I'm just going to hit compile and okay. So now what will happen is stage 5 will immediately run as soon as the game uh, loads and we will then run the function startup check and if we travel over here we can see that this the function start um, bollocks and um, we should have just run startup not startup check. Compile and not seeing scripts. And um, so we just run the function startup. Start. Uh, we run the function startup, and so now startup will be doing if startup check equals false. We're creating the registering for the remote event, and then, as you can see, the startup check here is checking if we're the right level. Obviously, if we're not the right level, if we're returning false, you can see if it equals false, we're registering for a remote event. And what the remote event will do is every time we change location on location change, we will be running startup check, so we'll be traveling back up here. So we'll be constantly checking this, this stuff, basically. And then once it eventually becomes true, i.e. game.getplayer.getlevel greater than or equal to 69, stage 10 is being set, and when stage 10 is set, our objective number 10 is being displayed and we're unregistering for remote events so that will stop it all ticking over because we don't want it to be constantly doing it and you can see our objective here is just tutorial objective so I'm now going to save this and I'm going to go into the game and demonstrate that working Actually, before I do that I just want to demonstrate exactly what a location is because I should have uh, mentioned that it's not just like wherever the player is standing locations can be very large um, so for example, you'll see here in this location tab, there's a whole list of locations and cells are tagged with these particular locations. So my save is in Abernathy Farm location. So once I go somewhere which is no longer the Abernathy Farm location, so if we click here cells, Abernathy Farm EXT, Abernathy Farm EXT02, once I leave those cells, it will run the remote event on location change and we'll be checking to see if I've leveled up in that time. So now I'm going to go into the game and demonstrate that working. Okay, so here I am in the game and we'll be able to see um, our quest hasn't started. And you'll also be able to see I'm level 68. So I'm just going to level myself up quickly. Um, oh, so I'm just going to over console player dot mod av experience 2000. Okay, I'm now level 69. So we're still in the Abernathy Farm location, so nothing's changed here. So we're going to need to go somewhere which isn't part of Abernathy Farm. So I'll just send myself down. I don't want to go there, so I'll get into a fight when I... Um, Croup Manor should be alright with no fights. So now we are changing location. So once we change location, we're going to rerun the startup check and check if we are level 69 or not, which we are. So hopefully when it loads up, uh, tutorial quest will start. There we go, look, started tutorial quest and tutorial objective is displayed. Obviously tutorial objective doesn't actually do anything because I've not set it up, but that's just an example of how we uh, start a quest based on the player level. 
So hopefully that was useful. Uh, I'm going to do some more stuff. I might do sort of the same thing except perhaps use the prerequisite as being when a particular quest has been completed, like a story quest. Or um, yeah, I'll do stuff like setting stages based on triggers, and perhaps once I've done whole loads of a whole load of little ones, I might just do a long form quest to show how lots of different things work together. And even if it ends up being a long tutorial, I'll sort of set some time aside to do it. So hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that was uh, clear. And thank you for watching, and goodbye.